Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I will show you a very important concept in lambda expressions that is about capturing variables in lambda expressions. Now this is a very important concept not only from the exam point of view but also you should know this to understand how lambda expression actually works behind the scenes. Okay, so this is a very important concept. So stay with me. I'll explain you step by step everything that you need to know about capturing variables in lambda expressions. So the first thing is that lambda expressions can use variables defined in an outer scope, right? So the variables defined in the outer scope that is outside the lambda expression, lambda expressions can use those variables. That's the point number one that you need to remember. The next thing is, so lambda can capture the static variables, instance variables, and also the local variables. That's the second thing that you need to remember. The third thing which is very important and you need to remember is that local variables must be final or effectively final. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. But as of now, just remember that the local variables must be final or effectively final. Now to make things clear, I will just show you this with an example. So let's jump on to the IntelliJ code editor and see the, all this concept with an example. So here I am in my IntelliJ code editor and what I'll quickly do is I'll just take reference of this example 02, like from where we just, you know, left off. I'll just start from there. So what I'll do is I'll just clone this example 02. Let's say copy and just paste it and let's name it as example 04. And what I want to show in this example is that variable used in lambda expression must be final or effectively final. Okay. So this is what I want to show you. The variable used in lambda expression must be final or effectively final. This is the main objective of this, you know, uh, exercise. So we'll see that, right? So before that, I'll just clean up these unused methods that we don't need. Okay, right. So we saw that in example 02, this is how we were printing employees, right? Then we just get rid of all this commented code. So this is where we are, right? So let's just understand this concept that variable used in lambda expression must be final or effectively final. So what we'll do here is, so let's say we define a local variable, uh, you know, salary limit, okay? So we define a local variable salary limit and let's say we want to refactor this code and we have created a local variable salary limit and obviously then we can you know pass this salary limit over here right and we can pass it over here okay now this is absolutely fine if i just you know run this code and we can see that these salaries are less than the salary limit and these salaries are greater than the salary limit right which is perfect now let's say that you know i want to assign another value to this salary limit and it doesn't compile if you just see now it says that the variable used in lambda expression should be final or effectively final right what does it mean right what it means is that the variable that you're using inside the lambda expression should be final or effectively final right so which means either it should be final which means if I make it final, I cannot actually, you know, again, uh, assign any variable because it is final variable, right? And that's how it works in Java. So now you get another compilation error saying cannot assign a value to final variables, you know, salary limit, right? But if we just remove this, right, then it throws compilation error at this point that variable used in Lambda expression should be final or effectively final. So what we mean by effectively final is that the, if you, don't assign or if you don't change the you know value of that variable that is also fine for the compiler because this variable is effectively final so the compiler is smart enough to understand that you're not changing the value of this variable in your code so which is which means it, that even though you have not defined the variable as final that variable is effectively final that's what it means by effectively final okay so one thing that you have to remember is that local variables that you define in the outer scope right and that you supply to lambda expression should be final or effectively final and th this behavior is not only true if you supply it let's say after that lambda expression before the invocation of the lambda expression if you supply it even then this does not compile right so the bottom line is the local variable that is being used in the lambda expression should be final or effectively final so now let me show you another example before this concept becomes crystal clear so now what i'll do is i'll change this use case a bit so instead of let's say printing the employees whose salary is less than the salary limit let me say that our manager just wants to know how many employees are actually earning salaries who's less than the salary limit and how many employees are earning salary more than the salary limit right so in short they just want the count of the employees they don't want to know 
the name of the employees. So if that's the use case, then in that case, what we need to do is we can, let's say, you know, implement one more method. Let's call it count employees. So we have something called count employees. We have employee list and employee filter, and it should return the count of the employees, right? So it should return something called int. Now let's just try to implement this in the functional style, you know? So instead of iterating through this for loop, what we'll instead do is we can say employee list dot for each and what the for each method accepts is consumer that's something we have seen in the last previous example right so what we'll say is that this for each we just need to you know uh, supply employee object employee and we just need to you know filter out the employees right so we need to actually count the uh, number of employees right so obviously this will not you know, compile so for that what we'll do is create another list employee and let's say filtered employee list right and this will be a new array list okay so we have something called filtered employee list so instead of you know printing we'll just try to add this to the filtered employee list and then once everything is actually added and then finally what we'll do is we'll say return filtered employee list dot size okay so we have just written a new method for counting the employees based on this filter Okay, so now our manager is obviously not interested in printing the employees. They just want to know the count of the employees. So what we'll do is we'll just count the employees. So we can just change this print employees to count employees. You know, the count employees actually return the count of the employees. So we need to just do a sys out of it, right? So now if we just run this program, we can see that it is returning the count, right? Less than five and greater than six, right? So we have six employees whose salary is greater than that salary limit and five employees whose salary is less than the salary limit, right? So this is perfect. The one thing that I just explained to you a while ago is that the local variable that you define in the Lambda expression should be final or effectively final. And you cannot change that variable inside the Lambda expression. But if you just look into this method, I have a filtered employee list and I'm actually, you know, adding employees every time to that list. So you might now think that I'm actually then, you know, changing this list every time and how this is compiling. Well, the reason it is compiling is, so I'm actually not changing the object that this variable is referring to, right? So this variable is still referring to the same object, which means I've not violated that rule that this variable should be final, right? So this variable is final and it is referring to the same object. It's just that I am just mutating that object, right? I'm just adding some new employee to that list. And this array list is, as you know, it is a mutable, collection basically right so i'm what i'm all i'm doing is i'm just mutating the state of that object but this variable is still pointing to the same object so that is why this code is compiling now even though this code is compiling and you should be happy that it is compiling right there's no problem with it and now just to highlight a drawback of this kind of implementation i'll just quickly show you one small example before we end this lesson so what i'll do is i'll just convert this employee list to something called stream for now don't bother too much about what is stream so all i did is i have just converted this collection employee list to stream and i'm just iterating through this you know uh, stream using the same for each so nothing much has changed if i just run this it will compile fine we can see that it's returning actually the same result right so this is fine right but let's say that tomorrow you have a huge collection of let's say you know 1 million employee list and obviously if you have a huge list doing this sequentially is not a good idea and that is where the concept of parallel streams comes into picture so we have something called parallel streams now in java this will now you know loop through this collection in a concurrent manner and obviously improve the uh, efficiency of this program right so what i did is i just converted this employee list into parallel stream and if i just run now you can see it's running fine if i just run multiple times i just ran you know a uh, couple of times and nothing happened what i'll do is i'll just go to my this collection for the time being increase this list to show you that how this will actually break when your data is huge so let's say you have this data okay for the time being and if i just run this now you can see that already the output is returning is different and then you get this exception array index out of bound exception so as you can see that this code is actually not consistent and it is behaving intermittently with different results because we have parallel you know streams and in parallel streams what happens is this code is now running concurrently so that is when this code will not work that is the side effect of mutating variables inside lambda expression so that's the better way you can do it now with the help of streams and lambda expression so all we need to do is employ list 
then you can the palette stream and then instead of writing the implementation you can actually make use of the uh, method filter right all we need to do is we need to just pass in the predicate which is nothing but the employee filter and obviously employee filter will not work because it's actually our own implementation and it's not a predicate so let's make it as a predicate first so we just made it as a predicate so let's call it as an employee predicate and this is the filter right so all we need to do is you know pass in this filter employee predicate as of now for understanding purpose so we can supply this predicate and then on top after supplying the predicate we can call this count method and that will actually you know count the uh, number of employees and then uh, we can actually return it from here and the final one final change that we need to do is it returns long so let's make this as a long instead of int okay because what we have effectively done in the single uh, line is we have first filtered the employees and then we are counting the employees and all using the built-in methods that are present on the stream so now if i just run this we can see that it is very consistent and every time it returns the same value so in short what we saw in this lesson is that lambda expression can use variables defined in an outer scope lambda expressions can capture static variables instance variables and local variables then the last point which is very important is local variables must be final or effectively final and then we saw some side effects when you try to mutate objects inside the lambda expression which you should avoid in your program so that's all in this video thanks for watching and see you in the next video